Hello Internet, this is Jay Watson. I'm going to create a quick tutorial. I'm going to show you how to create a simple HTML form, which many of you already know how to do, but then I'm going to show you how to style it. And I think uh, sometimes people struggle with that. So I already have uh, learn, not form, learn.html opened up here. It has a skeleton HTML. I already have it opened up in Chrome. And so we'll actually start styling it. And you notice that already, and I'm just using internal styles for this tutorial. Of course, if you're building a real website or anything like that, of course you'll be using an external style sheet. And and then I have a heading here that says creating and styling forms. I then have uh, a div class for my form wrapper. And then I have an H3 subheading that says email form. And then we'll actually create our HTML form. And when I create my form, of course I'm going to have the opening and closing tag, but then I want to specify a method and I'm going to use the post method. I'm not really going to talk about that a lot now, but we'll talk about it later. I'll then specify an action and what I'm doing to here is I'll be linking to my form processing script and in that case, or in this case, it'll be mail.php because after this tutorial, I'm going to create another tutorial where I show you how to create a simple uh, form processing PHP script and sometimes you'll see where this action is actually linking to the document itself so you'll have the PHP above the HTML doc type here it really doesn't matter but this will link to that script and so uh, sometimes people do it that way in this case we're just linking to mail.php that's the way I'll do it I think it'll probably be less confusing for you now I'll specify an input and I'm going to say a type or tile equals text. It's type, by the way. And then I'll specify a name. And of course the name will be name. And, and remember guys, this could be single or double quotes. Uh, just be consistent and remember you can't mix and match your quotes. So if you use a double quote, they both have to be double quotes. And if you use a single quote, they'll both have to be uh, single quotes. And then we'll specify the placeholder, and I'm going to say name. So you see uh, name, name, name. And this name here, when we give it a name of name, this means I want to get their actual name for this form. So I want their name, I want their email, and I want their message. If it's a simple form, we generally don't ask for much more. Some people might ask for a phone number, but in today's world, we're just like, hey, why are you asking for my phone number? Don't call me. I just want you know an email that, that's all I want and so I uh, will go ahead and create another input field type equal text name equal email and this name again it's like a handle that we'll use later uh, and we'll grab a hold of this particular HTML element and with that handle we're able to get a hold of the user's input and you'll see how that works later I feel like it'd be alright if you could type well, I took typing, but the typing book I used uh, was actually based on a typewriter. So we'll put a couple break tags here. And now let's actually use the text area fields for message. And with text area, you won't just, you'll have an opening and then you'll have a closing. Uh, but we want to uh, utilize a couple attributes here. First, we have to give it a name, and we're going to give it a name of the message. And then we also want to give it a placeholder. And I'll give it a placeholder of message. And then I want to also express the amount of rows. So I'll use the rows attribute. And with this rows attribute, I want to uh, tell it to, uh, I guess, six. Six would be a good number. And I can express columns, but I don't need to express columns. And I don't have the full version of Sublime. I encourage you to buy it, though. Uh, so I put a break tag there as well, and I'll need input type input input type equal uh, submit, and we'll give it a name of submit, and then we'll give it a value of I don't know send message probably, right? That's a good value to give it. And we won't put a break tag, and then we'll move on over, and we'll give it an input type equal to reset. And this will clear the form if they want it cleared. We'll give it a name equal to reset, right? B 
be descriptive, and we'll go to value of clear form. I think that's clear. And I think we have everything there with the HTML. Let's go ahead and open this up. Voila. Yeah, name, email, message, all the placeholders, everything's showing up. We have two buttons, send message, clear form. Uh, we're set to jet. We're good to go. So let's open Sublime up, and let's start styling this form. First thing we want to do is let's style the div wrapper. And hopefully you know all this stuff, but a position of relative width of 400 pixels, a height of 400 pixels. Let's give it a border of one pick solid gray background of light gray and what else we want to do curve the corners right be fancy and let's give it a box shadow so like five pixels vertical five pixels horizontal and let's uh, specify the spread or the blur and then we'll use the RGBA the RGB uh, red green blue value of black with the alpha value which specifies transparency and we'll say we want it to be pretty transparent and let's go ahead and center this dude and so we'll set the margin to auto let's go back to chrome refresh and you'll see what's happening here nothing did I save it div wrapper did I name my class div wrapper I hope you noticed that. That was a test. That was your first code test. I did not name my class div wrapper. Oh yeah, you don't want to center things too. Text align center. Okay, and that'll center things, right? And then let's go and create the we'll need something for the form. Oh yeah, I want to style the H3 too. Style everything, right? Form wrapper H3. And so this will grab the H3. This dude here, see that dude? It'll grab that one and we'll be able to style that. So whatever you want to do here, in this case, I'm just going to increase the font size to, I don't know, 26 pixels. I think that was my dad's old high school number. And I had his jersey when I was a kid, so I think that's why I used that one. Uh, and now let's specify uh, how we want what we want to do with the input tags. And in this case, I'm going to use input. And here's how this works, okay? So if you want to style the input tags with a type of text we use square, square brackets and we say type equal text alright so I want to style that one and then I also want to style the text area tags so I'm going to say comma text area and you'll see how this works out it's actually really easy uh, first thing is I want to set the width equal to 250 pixels and I want to set a slight curve to the corners and I'll just do something real subtle 2 pixels and a font size which will increase the placeholder size to 17 pixels and I'll put a border of one pick solid uh, gray around uh, the form fields and let's go ahead and just I don't know you can change the font family if you want I won't even change it but you can change the font family and I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to do oh yeah I want to add a margin uh, but I had to do some math for this one, and it's based on the form size because I wanted it to match up. You'll see here in a little bit uh, how it works. Uh, so I'll go ahead and refresh, and you can see what's happening here. Voila. Things look a heck of a lot better already, right? A heck of a lot better. And so you can see this actually looks like a real form, and we'll put a little margin on here in a second, okay? Uh, so now let's style our buttons. We definitely want to style the buttons. And so here, if we style the text type button see how the text type if we style them with this of course we're going to style the submit button by input square brackets type equal submit comma input and then we need to specify type equal reset all right and voila and I'm going to go ahead and copy this and I'll show you why because I want to style these on hover as well Wow, don't do that. Go up here and then press center. That's the way it works. So after this, okay, because this is going to style the submit button and this is going to style the reset button. And so here I want to style an on hover effect. So I'm going to put colon hover. And then after this one, colon hover. 
So when we hover over those buttons, it'll create a different effect. You know, maybe you want to make your button hot pink on hover or something like that. Maybe you're crazy like that. Uh, so now let's style our buttons. And I'm going to say border uh, one pick solid black. We'll use a bold color here. And I'm also going to specify the width, which you can do, of 120 pixels. And I'm going to give it a margin of 10 pixels. Put a little spacing in there. And I'm going to give it a background of, wow, light gray, if I can type it out. And you can give it a font family, and I recommend it. We don't usually leave default fonts in there. Let's curve the corners. Uh, again, pretty subtle. I'm just playing with this, guys. This is me just playing with it. I'm going to specify the height of 40 pixels and a font size of 14 pixels. And voila, uh, we got it going on here. Um, and with this here, and you can see we got a decent form. Let's go ahead and give this a background color here on the hover effect, okay? So I'm just going to do something where you can see what's happening. Background, hover, gray. And I also want to come back up here and add a little margin. And so here, and this is where I kind of did the math, I think, in my head a little bit, is I uh, did, uh, let's see, five pixels on the top. So it always starts with the top value, and then I did uh, 10 pixels on the right, and 5 pixels, and 10 pixels on the left, okay? And so let's look and see how that affects things. And we got some nice little space in here, guys. Everything that's spaced out. And look at the on-hover effects. Yeah, slick, huh? Not quite jQuery-ish, which you probably want to learn and you probably want to do where it's a bit more subtle. But this helps you style our style your forms, and it's it's really simple. Um, a lot of times, and, and the reason I included this is sometimes people will use the form attributes as itself. Uh, this as the containing element. I think it's better to just get in the habit of using a form uh, wrapper instead of using this, but we really don't even need to do anything with this. Uh, we could specify a bold font or anything uh, if we wanted to, uh, but we really don't even need to style anything with that. But this is very simple how you style forms. You can see uh, very minimal CSS, play around with this. Once you learn the rules of how all this stuff works, how the properties and values works, um, then you can take and do anything you want. Uh, and nobody remembers all the code. Nobody remembers all the syntax. You know, I forget uh, on the box shadow, for example, okay, what's horizontal, what's vertical. I remember the blur, uh, but I forget that stuff. And it doesn't matter. When you need to, uh, you can play around for a second or you can Google real quick. As long as you get the concept, that's what's important. Uh, thanks so much. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Take care.